Uh, good afternoon, uh, I'm Michael, and I came to, uh, to speak today about AI. So why about AI? Because AI is fun, AI is topical, everybody speaks about AI. AI is changing the way how we live, AI is changing the way how we earn money. Uh, but mainly because I do AI for the last 25 years and I cannot actually speak about anything else. So that's why <laughs> um, I'll be actually speaking about jobs. Not necessarily because jobs are important and because jobs can dictate how wealthy the society is going to be. Jobs can influence a social, uh, social stability of the society and also geopolitical safety. But because AI is changing jobs and AI is changing the way how we are creating the wealth. And I'll be also speaking about, uh, about education. And the reason why I think education really matters is that these days the world is changing much faster than it was changing before. It's going to change even faster in the future. And I actually believe that like program AI awareness and full participation in the AI change can influence the way to which extent our societies will be capable of taking the benefits of the AI change. Okay? So uh, the, in my, uh, those who invited me, they asked me to tell me a few words about what I think about AI and what AI actually is. And I tend to refrain from defining AI because AI definitions tend to be wrong. Uh, the, Definition I like is kind of like really simple, right? So AI is a piece of science, and you guys are student scientists, right? So you would relate to this. AI is a piece of science, and also a set of technologies that are helping us to replace human cognitive capabilities through computer programs. And not only replace, but also improve. Improve in scale, improve in speed, improve in precision. And those cognitive capabilities I need are mainly perception, the ability to kind of read, see images, understand video, the uh, understanding the speech, understanding the language, understanding is important human capability. Second one is reasoning, to be able to process data, to generalize, predict, analyze data, carry out logical reasoning. And the last one is rational choice, to be able to make a decision. So this is what people can do, this is what we are teaching computers to do in, uh, in, in, in programs. So what I believe in is a vertical specific AI where we are training, building intelligent systems that are doing a particle of things extremely well. Image recognition, playing poker, playing goal, planning trajectories, running robots, specific capabilities. This is called a vertical specialized AI. Some people also believe in what they call a general AI, right? An AI which is as general and as complex as we as humans are. And this is a goal of scientific progress of many researchers and scientists. And it is a subject of debate whether we will ever get there and whether a strong general AI one day will be taking over our lives and will be running us. Uh, I relate to Mark Zuckerberg, who is not afraid. I don't agree with Elon Musk, who is warning us against this trend. And the reason why I actually think that we are not there yet is that there are a number of more important challenges in front of us, and jobs as one well. of them. Before I get to jobs, I'll just tell you uh, what are the foundational methods that are running current AI programs. And some would tell you that you know, if you don't have a proper neural network running your program, is it AI? I don't agree. I actually think that it doesn't matter. Because Alan Turing, who is one of the godfathers of AI, he came up with this very specific proof of AI, where he's telling, if you guys cannot distinguish whether the guy that you are talking on Slack is a human being or a computer speaking on a specific subject, then the program is an AI program. Right? So if AI can, can, can imitate rational reasoning of a human, it doesn't really matter which algorithm it is being run. So we have, in principle, three approaches to building AI programs. One is automated reasoning, where we as programmers, engineers, are building programs that carry out computation in the same way as we humans reason, and then they work with data in the same way as we process our knowledge. That's called automated reasoning, and lots of programs, AI programs, are built with this capability. There's an alternative approach, currently these days, very popular, that we don't write the programs ourselves as AI engineers, but we let more generic AI system, called a neural network, 
to be trained on examples, to exhibit the behavior through being trained on labels, examples that are dictating how the AI can behave. And because these days we have tons of data, huge compute, we can do this. We weren't able to do this before because we didn't have the data, we didn't have the compute. Now we can train intelligent systems to behave as we like without programming them. Okay? So like you either go to the shop or you program your robot to do what you want the robot to do, or you shoot a video and you show your network what you want to happen, and then the network, through those examples, will actually learn the program that is running the role. This is the difference. And the third approach is called multi-agent systems, game theory, decentralized AI, where we, as a scientist, are building models that help intelligent programs to interact, influence each other, the same way as people influence each other. So when you look on the internet, and uh, you search online, somebody is giving you advertisement, right? And negotiation about which ads you see is a matter of negotiation, negotiating between the tons of intelligent programs that are interacting. So, and the field of multi systems is solving just that. AI is changing the way how we are earning money, how we are uh, generating wealth. And why is this? Why is it so? It's because AI is passionate about improvement, about increasing efficiency, about optimization, about doing things faster, quicker, uh, more efficient, but mainly cheaper. And this is why AI can actually compete with us, can start taking our jobs. When people ask me, uh, how can I train my kids for the future, I would say refrain from getting them ready for the that you see today, because if you do so, it's 50% chance that you'll be wrong because some of the jobs will go. Okay? So, with, which, you know, lots of jobs have come already. Uh, some will be going away soon, some will be going, on, uh, going away later. Those that are just in the front of disappearing, as an example, are the driver's jobs. In the US, you've got 2.5 million drivers and 3.8 million jobs related to driving. And because of the progress with autonomous driving, we will see a disappearance of these jobs. Why so? Because the driver is expensive. And in the future, you will see that manufacturing a car with an autopilot will be as cheap as a car without an autopilot. So autopilot comes for free. You don't need to pay for it. Right? So which is why if you have a driver there, you don't have to pay for driving. It's inefficient. And AI doesn't want this. AI doesn't want driver to be there. And that's why we will see a drop of jobs in this, in this particular domain. People always fear that AI and robots, and robots will come and they will take away from us manual work, work for which you need your hands. Especially, you know, you know, a nice example of this evidence is that in 2017, Barack Obama prepared his uh, AI report. And in this AI report, he wrote that uh, in the near future, there will be 84% of jobs that earn less than $20 an hour gone. While well, only 4% of jobs that earn more than $40 an hour will go. So go for jobs that are highly paid. That was the recommendation. And that's something where I totally disagree. I think it would be stupid for AI to try to save on jobs that are less than $20 an hour. Why AI would even bother? building expensive robots for such a cheap labor. AI will go for the expensive jobs, right? <laughs> no, but the money is, is actually. And I'll give you an example, right? In the financial services, in the financial sector, those guys who understand stock markets, they can predict trends. Those guys are like highly paid. And what they are selling, their MBAs, their PhDs, your experience, understanding the data, being able to work with data, AI can do this much better, much more precise. And you can see now algorithms trading online, selling buying stocks. So this job will go, right? This job will not be there for much longer, right? So and that's why you see that in banks there is this big revolution that everybody is scared of losing jobs because we do not need so many people in banks, right? Those are high paid. Um, I'm happy to be here at a medical faculty. I actually think that you, know, you guys are on a similar boat. <laughs> in medicine, in healthcare, the biggest bucks spent are on two things, on physicians and on prescription drugs. 
nursing in the United States is only 25% of cost that they pay for physicians. And what physicians do best? They choose treatment, they do diagnostics. This is, this is why we pay physicians, right? This is the most important thing they do, this is the most value they give us, again, based on proper uh, education and years of experience. While if you be able to instrument the human body well and resolve the problem of uh, privacy protection of the individual medical records, we can transform this to a data problem where AI can analyze, compare, and choose the best possible treatment out of thousands or hundreds of thousands of patients uh, suffering similar symptoms. So some part of diagnostics will be automated by AI, and this will bring down costs of healthcare. I actually believe that AI will be democratizing healthcare, making it much cheaper and more accessible to people who do not have an access to healthcare these days. Legal practice, lawyers, again, it's a difficult task for AI. AI can do great logical reasoning, AI can compare past precedences and then come up with the justifications. This is what AI does, actually. Right? So I really feel that you know, in, in the legal practice, we will see jobs go. And like you know, in London, there's this great startup that is these days building a technology for a, helping the due diligence in an MA process. So checking the uh, legal, uh, legal documents on both sides takes uh, weeks of work and costs of thousands of of, of dollars, and this, this work is pretty much manual, but, I mean like mentally manual, tedious, repetitive, and this is where AI can help. There is the other startup that I might call Clarity, where they are uh, shooting the market with technology for checking the non disclosure agreements, right? Before people get business, they are checking and yet this takes time and money and people do this. It's pretty fully cool automated. So the work that the junior lawyers are doing these days will go because AI can do this cheaper and more effective. How, how would we train junior lawyers if they don't have this opportunity? I don't know. So you see, AI is bringing bottlenecks to introducing skill labor force. Software engineers, AI engineers, is this a golden rail? Is it the best job ever? Will it stay? I don't know. Because these days, AI is building AI, actually. There is 100 and 11 billion of lines of code created every day. And a big part of those lines of code is AI created. Because we don't have so many AI engineers. So the way how companies are solving that is that they are building AI stack to help the engineers to spend the least amount of time in building AI. So AI is building AI these days. So I don't know how many Jews will stay there. So how does this translate to education? What shall we teach kids to do? What is important for the children and for the next generation so that they will be able to survive on the job market in 20 years from now. So my recommendation would be to teach kids uh, to build and destroy, to be able to challenge the scope, to be able to understand and propose changes, not to be afraid, to be able to debate, argue, to perform critical thinking, super important. And this is married with creativity. I want children to be able to write poems, to, to paint drawings, to write novels, to build startups. That's super important. So building startups is supposed to be the key subject at schools. We don't teach it, right? So creativity is super important and it can be taught in many different ways. So shall we refrain from teaching knowledge? Is actually knowledge important these days? But all the knowledge is available online? Actually, teaching knowledge is super important. We need to provide kids with a foundational piece of knowledge in, in science, in geography, in history, in languages, so that they can build their own individual education initiative, learning initiative, on top of the foundation that they get from us. That's very important. I would actually recommend to double down on math, because for me, math is freedom, right? The more math kids no, the freer they are, the better they can check, they can understand the data that they ingest, that they are being provided by the internet, they are being provided by social media and, and news. So math really matters. And we also want kids to be able to understand programs. They need to be able to program. 
not for getting programs, but for understanding how AI deals with us and how AI manipulates us. That's super important. It's super, this is supposed to be a foundational subject at schools. And we also want kids to be able to touch robots, to understand how robots are built. Because in the future, the job requirement will be AI empathy. The ability to understand AI, to work with AI. Because we will see a para-humans professions, or para-professions, professions that are AI enabled, AI accelerated. Lots of physicians will be using the deal of AI for diagnostics. It will be a mix of AI and healthcare job. In cyber security space, there will be a cyber security warriors, guys who understand cyber security, attacks mother, but also AI, because their job will be to run huge AI warships to find the attacks. Parallel jobs. But not only knowledge of AI is important. What is also important is much of people to understand how people feel, what they want, how they are motivated. Because those who understand AI, math, systems, and who understand people, those who are the leaders. And we need those leaders to build new startups, to change the way how we live, to change the way how we earn money, to change the way how we are motivated and work together. So we don't need any managers. Manager is a dying job as much as a lawyer. Because there will be much work that will, that will be managed by managers and dividing tasks into subtasks and checking on the progress, it makes it a sense. But we will need leaders. That's why we need to teach kids how to lead and how to be led and how to distinguish between being led and being manipulated. That's very important. And we also need kids to uh, understand how they can help. Caring, helping others. It's a super important skill for the future of the job market. Because in the future, there will be many jobs that would require working with people. If we are a rich society, if we are a rich country, then I believe that in healthcare we will need less physicians, but many more nurses in the future. And if we are rich, we can pay for nurses. If we are poor as a country, as a society, we will have robots. And I would like to live in a society where I'm being taken care of by human nurses and not robots. That's why we need to be successful with AI revolution to bring money to people so that they can people working for people. And the last piece of recommendation at school, we need to teach kids the values, right? Teaching is super important in, in, in providing kids with values. And the important value is freedom. Kids need to be passionate about freedom and they need to believe that AI can liberate them and that AI can teach them how to be free. Thank you.